Hey, it's Brooklyn time. At Brooklyn time NYC. What's the word? Hey, it's Brooklyn time, and you're tuned into What's the Word podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here. We are back. It is season four, episode one, and I'm super excited to be back recording. I took the summer off to get my life back on track. Life has been been continuing to life, but we'll get into all that's been going on with that. I appreciate you all for tuning in, as always. Thank you to those who have been reading and sharing my blogs, telling a friend to tell a friend, buying my merch and being a walking billboard for me. You have been following me on social media as well. You know, I appreciate you spreading love. It's the Brooklyn Highway. If this is your first time, um, where have you been? But as always, better late than never. So I welcome you as well. Make sure you check out my previous episodes and my blogs at www.brooklyntyenyc.com. And that's www.bklyntyenyc.com. You can also shop my merch. I have hoodies, sweatshirts, t-shirts, double-sided totes, mugs, and a lot more to come. This season, I also plan to be a little bit more consistent, dropping at least two episodes each month. I'm going to be trying to do it on Wednesdays. So make sure you follow me on IG at Brooklyn Tie NYC. And again, that's B-K-L-Y-N-T-Y-E-N-Y-C. This way you can turn your notifications on, follow me, and then you'll be notified every time I do drop. Uh, a, a new episode, basically. This season, I also plan on doing a few giveaways on various things like books or my merch. I may even throw a few concerts or plays or something like that. So stay tuned. And now let's get into Thai Talks. Hey, what's up, world? It's your girl, BK Medina. And I'm chilling with my girl, Brooklyn Thai. With What's the World podcast. Check it out. Okay, so I figured season four, episode one, I would just recap my summer 2024. And it was really dope. It was a lot going on. It's like, it was very busy. Most of it was spent with my kids. And I'm very grateful. I have amazing kids. But, you know, I say that every episode. But, you know, let me see. Where do I start? Um, My baby girl, my fourth child, she graduated high school from fashion high school. And so she had prom the day before my birthday. So I was able to get her prepared. My second oldest essence came from Florida. My son was there to help us out. My mother, my oldest daughter and the rest of my family for the most part were on a cruise. And they weren't coming back until the day before her graduation, which wasn't going to be the following week after her prom. So I've never in my life had to do anything for my kids, (laughs) just like me by myself, like hair, makeup, like just getting it all done by myself without my mother, without my grandmother, without my aunt. Like it was crazy. And I just I, I was about to turn 47. And four kids later, it wasn't until this last child that I realized how appreciative that I am of my mother because I needed her and it was nothing I could do because she was in the middle of some, 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 somebody's island. So thank God I had Essence who executed like hair and makeup. My son was there to keep everything all together. Um, the photographer, he was like basically the photographer made sure the Uber was coming. And like, I just really am grateful for my kids for real. So we dropped, uh, we dropped her off at her hotel. Yeah. She had like a whole penthouse suite with some of her friends, courtesy of one of her best friends, grandmother. So, you know, they was off the prom. We were going to go back to meet her back at the yacht because it was on a yacht, fourth floor yacht, like in the middle of New York City. But 
time went by, I got tired because I had just got there from Virginia like that morning. So that happened. The next day um, was my birthday, June 22nd. And I had been invited to a private penthouse affair that was going down for um, Rowena Husbands and Johnny Nunez who are legendary hip hop photographers and so much more, like so much more to their names. So I was excited for that because Miss Renee Foster, who is an amazing woman, we ironically met on Instagram on a post about a movie that happened in Kew Gardens. And from then on, like we've, it's been, it's been at least 10 years, maybe if that, I love her to death. One day I hope to have her on. Like I want to interview her maybe hopefully this season. She is one of the co-founders of the Hip Hop Museum that's going to be opening soon. So, you know, anyway, we, I went with Essence because I had been invited like uh the month prior and I was able to bring a plus one. So since heaven, since Essence was coming to New York for Heaven's prom and graduation I was like well you know I'll let her be my plus one plus I love hanging out with my daughter so that happened I did do a blog on Rowena husband so you can check that out but I'll go more into who she is uh, later on in this um, podcast it was an amazing like I've never been in a penthouse before I was amongst a lot of celebrities, a lot of people in hip hop, a lot of journalists, a lot like I was I I felt like I was meant to be in that room. Um, And again, all because of Renee Foster, who from once I told her what I wanted to do before I even had a blog and a podcast, she was one of those who was cheering me on and like telling me, let me know anything that I can do. She was the one who was setting me up to be in rooms and events in like the hip hop world for the most part for me to have content. So a lot of blogs that I've done on hip hop is because she has made a way for me to be at those events and in those rooms. So, you know, I cannot wait to have her on. I swear to God, like she's, she's an inspiration. She's like my godmother. So then, you know, we're partying. We're having a good time. Uh, Melba's, which is like Z Melba, um, Z Miss May, Miss Melba, um, famous restaurant entrepreneur. Like she, her food is amazing. I had oxtail tacos. Okay. Um, <laughs> which was really, 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 really good because I don't really, I try not to eat meat and I try not to, do too much and I don't really care for oxtails but um those were very delicious so y'all need to check out if you're ever in 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 New York also let's see what else happened my daughter my oldest who seems to be the only one who will be giving me grandchildren is she found out she's pregnant with her second child I'm excited her oldest just turned 12 so we don't know what it is yet. We get to find out uh, actually next week at a gender reveal, which to me, these kids today or these people today and or in today's world with all of these extra things when it comes to having babies, it's a little bit on the extra month, you know, extra, extra too much for me. But it also gives the opportunity for families to get together um, because, you know, we can't all get together at one time. So. We're having a gender reveal. We'll find out if it's a boy or a girl. I really don't care because I just want a baby. I just want another baby to come. And I'm excited for my daughter and her husband. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh, so let me tell you. I don't know. Do I want to tell you about, let's talk about the Olympics right quick. Let's just shout out the USA. We won 126 medals. In this year's Summer Olympics, which was in Paris. So there were 40 gold, 44 silver, and 42 bronze. Simone Biles, um, who is huh, one of my favorite gymnasts, she won um, 
three golds, one silver, in like various categories. But I felt like a proud sister. I felt like a proud big sister watching her do her thing in the Olympics. So that was dope. But let's get let me let me just tell you right quick about taking my daughter, who again she had her prom. Then we did the graduation the following week. My family was back. They had returned from the cruise, which they left us. And just seeing my grandmother, like, you know, my grandmother is amazing. She's raised some wonderful kids and grandkids and great, great grandkids and other people, kids and foster kids. And, you know, so shout out to Nana, who I am blessed to still have. I am five generations. You know, I just... I just think, I just thank God to have come from such a strong woman structure of amazing women, like not chicken heads, not women out here running the streets and on drugs and like being extra. So I, you know, I'm very blessed with that. So, and also to have four, my fourth child graduate high school and be off to college as a single mother who has had a very strong village and a lot of people who have been there for me through like the gutter. Like I've been through a lot with raising all of my kids. I mean, from homelessness to like living in the shelters to starving, but making sure my kids is, you know, have, have a roof over their head and have food in their mouth and still being able to be clean and, you know, looking proper to go to school. Like they not going through the struggle because I try to make it seem as if that, you know, not that, not, not, I didn't want them to, to know the situations that we were, you know, how bad it really was, basically. I still wanted them to be kids and not have to worry about things. So that's why even now with them being older and with my baby, like this is my baby going off to college, never being away from home, even though, you know, my oldest has done it, but that's my roadie. Like, she, I, I never had doubts that she would be able to take care of herself and be on her own. My second oldest, you know, she's just my adventurous world traveler. Like, I, there was nothing, there was going to be nothing I could do to make, make sure she stayed still and stayed home or, you know, she, she just likes to be out and again, adventurous to me. Um, and then, you know, my son is doing his thing with his acting and his singing and his plays and all of that stuff. So my baby, heaven, she is more the most sheltered. She, you know, has older siblings. She has aunts. She has everybody that who can, who has always been able to do for her. So getting her off and, and like her deciding to go upstate to college was a lot. It was a lot. Emotionally, it was, it, it still has been a lot. And it's only been about two weeks at, at, you know, as of today, it's been about two weeks. Um, so my basically, so let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all the trip. And if y'all go to my Instagram page, I did highlight both things I'm going to tell you. So first getting her there was like smooth sailing. I had left Virginia Friday night and I got to New York City. About 5.36 the next morning, Saturday morning, my mother brought my daughter to me to at Penn Station. Now, over the phone, it was a few bags. A few bags, I told her, I wasn't coming with nothing but, like, my little backpack with my wallet, like, you know, my keys. Just my basics, their necessities, because I knew we were going to have to carry bags. But a few bags to me... When it came to how I know my daughter should have known me and what I was going to be capable of carrying or what I felt like dealing with carrying and being responsible and watching bags and that aspects of thinking a few bags was maybe like two bags, two big bags. Cause my mother had told me she had got some check it bags and those are like, you know, they got their, their, if you, if you old school New York, you know, the check it bags. Y'all know what, y'all know the bags I'm talking about. No, 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 no. How about it was 10 bags? So my mother meets me and my daughter at Penn Station with 10 bags that I have to take on the train by myself 
with my daughter. Not to mention a roll around bag and a book bag. But because I am the mother that I am, the grinder that I am, and come hell or high water, we gonna get to where we need to get to. We did it after like taking the bags two at a time downstairs, coming back up, going to get more. Like it was a, it was a mess, but I made it. We got there. We got on the train. We got to, we got upstate. Got off the train. Thank God it was just one level and it was like street level. So took an Uber to her school, got her settled, situated, checked the scene. Thank God, because I, at this point, I'm like emotional. I'm like, I, I don't want to leave. It's like eight o'clock, eight thirty by the time when, when we got there at night. And I'm just like, I don't, I'm not ready to leave. I'm like, okay, um, we can go to Walmart. Let's go to Walmart. I've, that's like, let's, let's go pick you up some stuff at Walmart. So we go to Walmart. We at Walmart for a long time. It's not that far, but we did take, um, took an Uber or a Lyft or whatever we took to cab. We're just browsing. I'm like, I know Walmart, Walmart, but like the back of my hands. But I'm like, you know, let's go out for aisle. So this Walmart is huge. It's like two Costco's put together for real. So we're getting all of this stuff. I'm making sure she got her lotion, blanket, pillows, beds, bed spreads. And, you know, cause college beds are like, uh, I think nine inches longer or whatever the, whatever it is. It's like a TXL. Um, so, you know, got some sheets for her bed. Then we get back to her dorm and it's live. It's lit, but everybody, you know, they seem like, you know, it was, it, I felt safe and comfortable leaving my child. So we unpack everything. Like she's pack unpacking all of the bags, everything we got from Walmart. I'm helping her put a lamp together, and really and truly, I ain't even have to do that because you really just screw it all together. But I was just like, you know, killing time because I'm like, I do not want to leave my baby. So I do have a 4:15 a.m. train to catch back to Penn Station because then when I get there, I'm supposed to get there at about 12:30 noon. And then I had a 3.30 bus to get, to get, um, to go back to Virginia. So I could be at work by 12.30 on Monday. So of course my luck will have it. But you know, so anyway, let me back up. I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to leave my baby. Um, you know, her roommate isn't there yet. She doesn't live far. So she was home celebrating her birthday and I'm just like, I don't want to leave my baby. I don't want to leave my baby. But I had to. And it was hard. And we hugged. And we hugged. And we hugged. And, you know, I just was telling her, like, you know, don't forget. You could call me anytime. You know, I am I will be back in a heartbeat with, with no hesitation, no matter what I got to do to get back here. And if you've ever had to leave your child in a different state, for school, it's like, I've done this before, but it's never easy. It's all, it's always going to feel like the first time, but I'm so glad this is the last time because now I'm, I'm like, she'll never, she'll, she'll never come back home. Like I, I'm, I have an empty nest for real, even though she's been in New York and I've been living in Virginia by myself for like the last two years because she's, she finished school in New York. When I moved here, but now it's like, you know, my kids go off and they have no reason to return because they're very independent. They like, you know, they, they take care of themselves, themselves. So, which is a very good, proud thing for me because, you know, they, they know where I, wherever I have, wherever I'm at, they always have a home, but I know they're going to be okay. So. And I'm like, she's going to be going for four years. And, you know, I just pray that she'll be safe. And she knows that she can always call me. She could always come home. It doesn't have to work out. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard as a mom when your baby leaves. 
So boom, that's that. It's time for me to leave. I get to the bus station a little early. And again, my bus, my train leaves at 4.15. I was supposed to get to Penn Station by 12.30 p.m. And then I had a bus that I was supposed to take at 3.30 that would get me back to Virginia by 11.30 that night. All of this is going on on Sunday. Get on the train. The train comes. Soon as we get on the train, there's a notification that the train was going to be delayed and late and whatever. But some of us are confused because we're like, the train is right here. So the conductor was like, you know, just disregard. So we get on the train. I wake up, I doze off, I immediately go to sleep because it's been a long journey, it's been a long day. I have been, you know, I had worked the day before 12 hours and then traveled to New York, and then from New York to, it was just a long day. I passed out. I woke up like 8.15 and we just stuck, we just like sitting there. But we're in between just trees and forest shit and I'm just like, I don't know where we are, but we're just sitting there. So I'm like, you know, I know trains will sit or, you know, it might be a red light or something. I don't know. So I pay attention to the time. It's like 8, 10, 8, 15. So I'm like, all right. So we sit in the aisle, get up. I go to the cart to get, uh, like, the food cart to get some snacks and the coffee or whatever. Come back, sit down. And I'm like, we're still sitting here, but ain't nobody saying nothing. I sit down. I take out my book. And I'm just like, yo, why... Let me look around, like, does it look like we've been sitting for a round? So I could hear huffing and puffing at this point. So I'm like, oh, we must have been sitting here for a minute. But where are we? So I pull up my maps and I'm like, it's saying like Rome, New York is like one of the nearest highlighted cities that we are. That, you know, we're still, I'm I'm just in still in the state of New York. So I'm like, what's going on? The conductor comes on and says... This announcement about there's a engine problem. We're waiting for the train that was leaving behind us, behind this train, which when my train left, the next train wasn't leaving until 701, which is why I didn't want to take that one because I wasn't going to make it to the bus to get back to Virginia. So I'm like, oh shit. Now I know I'm not making that bus to get back to Virginia, which means I'm going to have to take the bus in the morning once I get to New York, which means I'm going to have to sleep sleep at my mother's house, which means I'm going to get to work. Like, I'm not making it to work on Monday at 1230. No big deal at this point. No big deal. So finally, the train comes, but it has to pass us to then back up to us and attach to us. And then it's going to drag us to to Albany, New York. And we wasn't going to get there for another few hours. From then, the train, we get to Albany, because I'm going to just speed it up, because I'm not going to hold you. But it was a fiasco. Again, I have the I have this highlighted on my stories, on my Brooklyn um, Instagram, uh, B-K-L-Y-N-T-Y-E-N-Y-C. And that's Brooklyn Tie NYC. So y'all need to check that out. But anyway, we get to Albany. Now they trying to figure out disconnecting which train is going to leave first like it was a it was a mess i finally get to penn station like 6 30 7 o'clock that night like it was crazy on the train for about four hours there was no power which means no bathroom no no they can't heat up no food nothing like that but then yet they're giving us water and pretzels and expecting folks not to go to the bathroom and it's only like one or two bathrooms it's a minimum of two bathrooms on each car ridiculous so now i'm like do i call customer service now because it's sunday but i'm like i know they got 24 hours you know 24 hour service because this has not been the first time amtrak has done some crazy shit or some crazy shit has happened on amtrak with me so i'm like I hear other people calling, so I'm like, I'm going to call now because this way, more than likely, I'll get someone who's just spoken to somebody on this train 
who's pissed off. So just to sum everything up, I might get even extra deals because now they just want to get me off the phone. And P customer service hate to hear me calling. So I ended up getting a representative. She gives me a case number. Um, she's like, you know, call cust customer relations tomorrow, which would have been Monday. I'm like, bet, because they're going to give me something for this. At least, at least a ride back. So where was I? I get, I get to Penn Station. Then I'm like, I'm just going to go home. Cause you know, my house, I have out my house, my mom's house in Queens. So I'm like, I'm just going to go to Queens. I get to Queens. I get on the A train after debating. Do I take the F train or do I want to take the A train? So I take the A train. And then there's police activity, four stops before, before I'm about to get off. So I'm like, tell me you don't want me to get home, Lord, without telling me you don't want me to get home. So I finally get to my mom's house, go get something to eat, because I haven't eaten all day. I don't even know when the last time I ate. Finally get back to Virginia. I got back to Virginia about 4.30, and y'all think I ain't go to work? I went straight to work. By the time I went to my mother's house, I done took a shower, I done ate, I done got at least six hours of sleep, got up, traveled back to the city to do it all over again to get back to Virginia. So I was like, you know what, let me just go to work because I'm always catch the bag. And I made it to work, did my shift. People were like, you're crazy. I don't know how you did all that and still went to work. But, you know, I got to do what I got to do. So... As far as Amtrak, they did give me a free ride. They gave me a free round trip. So I am going next week <laughs> back upstate. And then I'm doing it all over again to go see my baby for her birthday. And I'm excited for that. Yeah, basically that was my, that was my fiasco taking heaven to college. And now I'm going to do it again. Uh, but I can I can definitely tell you I won't be going to see her for a while because she's all the way upstate and it gets negative degrees and it's about to be cold and snowy and I'm I'm not trying to not trying to do all of that. Well, if anything, I'll just meet her in New York City. Like she can come home. We'll we'll link at my mom's house because uh I'm not trying to go upstate while the winter. <laughs> is happening and going on. So, anyway, that's that. That was basically the wrap-up of my summer. Now we can get into what I'm reading, watching, and listening to. It's DJ B, Fresh Radio, Fresh Topia, Philly, the VA, Scratch Mechanics is the crew, all right? Hey, you want to know what the word is? You got to holler at Brooklyn Todd. She spreads love the Brooklyn way, all right? What's the word for Brooklyn Todd? You already know. So as far as what I'm reading, I'm learning to read the room. I'm starting to realize that everybody is not for me. Everyone does not have my best concerns. And sometimes you just have to, like, not... Want to want to fit in when you were born to stand out, and I'm really learning that, and I'm learning that the hard way because it's a lot of people who I expect for some reason when you know I should never expect a lot from a lot of people, but I do. I'm starting to realize those who really should be there for me really aren't, and I have to be okay with that. You know what I'm saying? As far as what I'm watching, I'm watching the company that I keep, you know, because I can do bad by myself. And that's in, you know, life. So I'm feeling stuck sometimes because I'm worrying about making sure everybody else, you know, those that I love are OK. And I need to start putting myself first. So. That's what I'm doing moving forward. And this we're about to be in the last quarter of 2024. And I need to prepare for 2025 and my goals. And, you know, I can focus. I have to focus more on myself. I, I made this month self-care September. And I'm working on a lot of things to better myself so that I can be a better person for my kids. And now my grandkids or my newest grandchild that's coming. 
you know, I just, I'm, I'm just in a, in a better headspace. And I have a lot more work to do, but I'm getting there. But at the same time, as far as what I'm watching, I've also been watching on Netflix. I don't know if y'all heard of Supercell, but Supercell is this new series. It's six parts. It's on Netflix. It's directed, it's directed by Ratman, who's a British rapper. He was actually signed to Rock Nation, but like screenwriter, he has a movie on YouTube called Shiro's Story. I had seen it like a long time ago, but I remember like that it was, it was mad dope. So y'all need to check that out. It's about, it takes place in the UK. It's about these like five superhero, superheroes who like, come into their superpowers. They don't even know in the beginning that they have superpowers. It was picked up for season two. I just hope season two has more episodes because six was definitely not enough. I did watch it twice. This is the first season. This is the first series that I've ever watched twice. I didn't watch it back to back, but I did watch the entire series, all six episodes twice, and I've never done that. That's how good it is. Oh, also Daughters. Daughters is on Netflix as well. It's directed by Angela Patton and um, Natalie Ray. It's about these four daughters. It follows like these four daughters as young as four, like four or five years old. They prepare to reunite with their dads for like this father-daughter dance in, in a DC jail, and it just takes you along like the feelings, you know, they're speaking to the kids. The the young girl, I believe she, I don't remember if she was four or five, but she was very young. She was, she was no more than five. Very smart. Very smart. So it just takes, takes you through the preparation and like speaking on how they feel about their fathers being in jail. Then I believe maybe about, maybe it takes you through like nine years. Like, cause they, they get, it ends when they're older. It takes you like a, 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 a update. It gives an update at the end on where they are now and, you know, what has happened since the dance took place. So check that out. That's called Daughters on Netflix. And last but not least, I don't, haven't really been like listening to too much. I have been listening to myself in my instance for the most part. I haven't been listening to any new music besides basically what I normally listen to, which is a lot of Mary J. Blige classics, a lot of Anita Baker classics, a lot of um her. I've been doing the Erica Badu a lot lately. There's been a lot of hurts, like hurts. I've been meditating to, to get my mind clear. So I've been doing that. But, um, that's really it. And last but not least, rest in peace to Fat Man Scoop, yo. I cannot believe he is not, he's not here. He just passed away. It was either I it was either thirtieth, August thirtieth or the thirty first. But his family did make a statement and I just wanted to read it right quick. And it says a message from the Freeman family. It is with profound sadness and very heavy hearts that we share news of the passing of the legendary and iconic Fat Man Scoop. Last night the world lost a radiant soul, a beacon of light on the stage and in life. Fat Man Scoop was not just a world-class performer. He was a father, brother, uncle, and a friend. He was the laughter in our lives, a consistent, a, con a constant source of support, unwavering strength, and courage. Fat Man Scoop was known to the world as the undisputed voice of the club. His music made us dance and embrace life with positivity. His joy was infectious and the generosity he, he extended to all will be deeply missed but never forgotten. As we mourn the loss of Fat Man Scoop, we also celebrate his remarkable life and the countless lives he touched. Fat Man Scoop's legacy is of love and brightness. It will reside in our hearts and memories forever. And so 
you know, just a quick moment of silence to Fat Man Scoop. He died doing, literally doing what he loved. And there'll never be another. Rest in peace. And basically, that's all, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check on your loved ones. These days, we have to do it as often as possible because life be life. And tell a friend to tell a friend about what's the word by sharing my blogs and my podcasts. And, you know, putting them onto my website, www.brooklyntynyc.com. And that's Brooklyn Tie. NYC.com, B-K-L-Y-N-T-Y-E-N-Y-C. And you can find this podcast everywhere podcasts are. Follow me on X and IG at Brooklyn Tie NYC. And again, that's B-K-L-Y-N-T-Y-E-N-Y-C. Special shout out to my homie, Smiles, producer, program director of this podcast. You can follow him at Smiles TF1, the number one. Definitely hit him up and tell him I sent you for all your musical needs, beats, producing, etc. Let him know I sent you. <laughs> okay, I'm out. As always, spread love. It's the Brooklyn Tower. Hey, it's Brooklyn Tower. <laughs> At Brooklyn Tower NYC. <laughs> and spread love. It's the Brooklyn Tower.